Hello all and welcome to my YouTube channel. We are continuing with the Autogen series and this is the fourth lecture in this particular series. So if you haven't watched previous three videos, please go ahead and watch out those videos. The link is available in the below description. So in the last session, we have continued with allowing human feedback in agents. We have understand the importance of adding human feedback or the requirement of human feedback in multi-agent conversation. So in the last session, we have seen a very simple example where we have built two agents in order to play a guessing number game. And we have requested those two agents, one agent to take one number in mind and another agent to guess that particular number. And we have seen how the conversation happens between the agents and also we have seen the importance of adding human in the loop. Now, human feedback in the loop. In this particular session, we are going to continue with adding a code execution capability for an agent. This capability, we can add it at agent level. And let's understand how exactly we can do that. So basically, in order to have a code execution capability for an agent, that agent needs to execute that code into an environment and that environment can be anything. So basically, so let's understand how exactly code executor works. So code executor allow agent to interact with an environment. Now this particular code executor gives capability for agent to interact with an environment and this is going to be our code executor environment, right? Second, it also allows to take action. Now this action can be anything like executing the code or write the code. And third one is performing useful computation. This is the third action that it takes. Let's understand how exactly code execution work. Let's say you are building a multi-agent framework where you want to pass a input to the one agent that agent should generate the code and it pass it to the code execution and execution should happen and it should generate a response. Now for that, let's say there is one input message coming from the user. This input message first will go to This message first will go to code executor. From code executor, it will generate the code. And it will pass it to the execute code. And once it is passed to the executor code, executor code will execute and generate the result. But for generating the result, this executor code need This executor code will need a environment. So this executor code currently don't know where to execute this particular. Now let's understand what are the ways that are available in order to execute the code. So there are two ways with which we can execute the code. First one is local terminal. And second one is Jupyter executor. Now this local terminal is responsible to execute the code in command line. And this Jupyter executor is responsible to execute the code at the interactive Jupyter terminal. So these are the two ways where exactly this particular executor will execute the code and we need to define these environments whenever we are going to build the agent and that's what we are going to see in the practical implementation now for these two environments what we have is two different ways to execute the code let's understand what are those First way is local execution and second one is with the help of Docker. So in the local execution, uh, it is in the same way where environment where exactly the autogen code is running. So it tries to detect that environment and runs the execution, runs the uh, code into that particular same environment. So the first one is local. And second one is Docker. 
so for this particular local terminal again uh, this is the command line terminal so it will use either a local environment or this local terminal which will use a docker environment or docker terminal uh, for executing the code and in this particular video we are going to study the we are going to see the local environment of code execution let's understand how exactly this code execution work now in local execution as you can see first this particular message with code block now this particular message with code block can be from a human or it can be from another agent so what we can do is we can build a another agent this is the code generator agent and this agent will generate this particular code and sends this code to uh, it will generate the message with code block and that message with, with code block goes to the agent and this is our executor agent and this executor agent will execute this particular code but before executor what it needs to do is it needs to create the code file so first it will generate the code file now this code file we are going to see the python example so it will generate let's say main.py file in order to run the code so this is how the code file will be for example and then this file it will execute in the console output so whatever environment we have selected so currently we have selected local operating system so in local command line it will execute the code and the output it will fade back to the agent so whenever it is feeding back the output to the local execute uh, sorry to the code executor then that code executor agent will analyze the output and sends that response back to the user and user will receive a response uh, in the required format so it may be let's say uh, the output of code, code agent let's say it is in integer then it will be an integer if it is png file then it will be png file and etc so it can be anything and uh, the format in which the output is required we need to define it in the code agent because that's how it will write the code in order to generate those particular responses i hope this basic flow is clear to you and uh, it will be very clear once we see the actual examples so, so without wasting time let's jump onto the uh, vs code where we will try the practical implementation of how exactly we can build a agent with code executor capability okay so let's see how we can enable a code execution so for that let me create a separate folder and under code executor let me add the file code execute.py uh, sorry let's uh, for easy understanding right instead of py we will try it out on the ipynv file like in jupyter notebook so let me rename the file so you need to ex uh, you need to install jupyter in your uh, virtual environment so please make sure you are installing the jupyter the command is pip install jupyter let me activate the okay let me close this uh, so you can see it is detecting the kernel for now so let's wait for that okay now we can see we can select the kernel for selecting the kernel we can go to the python environment and this is the one under vnv script python.exe so this is our kernel so let's say we have selected the kernel so let's get started so what we can do first let's import the necessary dependencies in order to save the time let me copy paste so you can see what we need is temp file temp file is required to create the temporary directory uh, sys os those are the normal requirements then from autogen we need conversable agent because that's what we are uh, going to build and from autogen.coding you can see the coding class is available under autogen we are uh, sorry the coding module is available and inside that module we have a class local command line executor Similarly, there is another class for docker command line executor that we will see in upcoming video. But let's understand how exactly the code executor we can integrate. So already we have uh, installed all the dependencies. So let me execute this particular line. So you can see it is asking me to uh, install the uh, IP kernel package. If you are first time installing the uh, Jupyter, then it may ask. You can click on install and let the installation gets complete. Meanwhile, what we can do is we can uh, start writing further code so where we need to define the temporary directory so this is the temporary directory that we are creating we can pass our custom directory for this particular example let's uh, keep it simple we'll just use the default temporary directory that it will use and we'll see where exactly it is saving the code and we'll be able to go into that location and see whether it has executed the code or not so this is the temporary uh, directory and then we can write the executor code so for writing the executor code as we know that 
this executor is a capability that we need to pass it to the agent. So first, let's write the executor. So this is the executor which uses local command line executor code. Uh, it has timeout and the work directory. So from the temporary directory, we are passing the uh, temp directory dot name. Simple thing. And now further, we can write a code executor agent. So this is the first agent that we are creating code executor agent. You can see we are calling conversable agent and uh, let me close it. Okay, so this is the code executor agent and uh, for this LLM config, we are pass we are not passing any LLM config because this agent only needs to execute the code and we are already passing executor capability. So you can see code execution config, we are passing executor capability. Now here code writer agent we have not built. Let's keep it very simple. We will pass that code manually to this particular code executor and let's see whether it is executing the code. Once the environment is set up, then we can have a separate agent to write the code. We can pass that output to this code executor agent and then we can ask this to execute the code. As this is only the executor, it doesn't need the capability to, it doesn't need LLM to write the code. If you want to combine two agents, then you can give uh, you can pass LLM configuration here so that it will use LLM to generate the code and then execute. And then in those case, you need to write a proper prompt. You need to write a system message with proper uh, steps that first it needs to create the code and then it needs to uh, execute that particular code. For us, we will keep it very simple. We will have separate agent to generate the code and then a coder executor, which will only do the execution part. Because uh, let's say, this executor is just to execute the code. So we can have a separate agent where we can give full capability to generate the coding exper uh, generate different different codes. And then we can just pass those codes for executor to execute it. Okay, now you can see uh, it has exec uh, it has installed the Jupyter kernel. So let me execute. Yeah, you can see it is working. Let's execute this particular code and let me show you what exactly is there in the temporary directory. So temporary directory dot name. Okay, you can see this is the path where the code will be saved. So whenever you are trying, just check what is the default path where the code will be saved. So let's go ahead and add the further code. Now, as I mentioned, we are not going to write a separate agent in order to generate the code message. Instead, we will be passing a code message from our side. So let's say this is the code message. Uh, this is the code block and this is the sample code that we have given. And uh, we have written the language as Python. So this is very simple code in order to uh, in order to plot the scatter plot. So let's understand now this part later on we will be replaced it with a agent. Agent will generate this code for us and then that code will be automatically passed to the executor. But for simple understanding, let's keep it this way. And you can see we are saving the file in PNG file, uh, PNG format and this file will be saved at this particular location, default location. So now we have written all the code. Now it's time to execute the particular uh, it's time to call the agents so you can see we are calling a code executor agent and there is one function generate reply where we need to pass role as user and content we are passing as message this particular message that we have custom written so let's go ahead and execute so it will throw an error basically as we have chose the uh, local terminal it will pop up a message and it will ask for a human input because if you see here we have given human input mode as always so it will always ask for adding a human input whether you want to execute the code or not so if i am hitting enter into this particular terminal what will happen it will fail because it will expect these two dependencies uh, numpy and matplotlib this particular matplotlib file so let's see that You can see no human input received using auto reply and then it is executing the code block and it has failed because no model name uh, matplotlib. Now what will happen is even though if you install the matplotlib in this particular environment, it will be saved under your this particular Python environment. But instead we want to save this particular, uh, we want to install the matplotlib into the environment where exactly the code is getting executed. And that's where I have added this particular line, sorry, in order to print the uh, system where exactly it is executing so this is the python execution so you can see this python execution it is installing and this is the environment python 3.11 so let's copy this particular path and in this particular path what we need to do is we need to install the matplotlib library and in order to install that you can open your terminal you 
you can paste this part in quotes and then you can write pip install matplotlib and let's hit enter sorry we need to pass hyphen em Let's wait for the installation. Once the installation is done, then we'll be able to execute the code. Okay, you can see now the matplotlib installation is done under this particular uh, Python environment. And uh, let's go ahead and re-execute this particular code. Now you can see it is requesting for human input. I'm hitting enter. You can see uh, no human input received. So using auto reply and it is going into the code execution block. Okay, I was facing several issues, so I have fixed it now. So basically, we and this matplotlib uh, dot pyplot as plt was having several issues with the uh, MLP backend. So we need to set this environment variable. So I have imported uh, OS and then I have passed this particular environment variable where I have put MLP backend value as aggregate. So once we pass this, then we'll be able to execute this now. Uh, if you are facing any issue, right, it is giving the list of MLP backend. You need to pick one value from that. I have picked the aggregate and it worked. So now let's execute this particular block and then uh, let's execute this particular line where we are passing the message with code content. And now it is asking for human input. So let me hit enter. You can see now no human input received using auto reply and then it is executing the code code block it has inferred the language is python and then it has executed the code using this particular python executor and then this scatter, uh, scatter plot has been saved where exactly the scatter plot has been saved that we already know that this is the directory so let me show you we can go to the directory okay so as you can see now uh, this these files are created because we have executed this multiple times. So this is the scatter plot that it has generated. So let me open. You can see this is the scatter plot it has generated, and uh, you can see the path. This is the path where it has generated. Now we can change the path, and uh, I would recommend you go ahead and try it out. Change the path, and then that's how uh, you can see where exactly it is saving. So with this, right, we have. Uh, enable the capability for our agent to execute the code and why it is important because whenever you are building end-to-end -end project right it's very important to define the execution environment and uh, in later parts right we are going to study the autogen studio where it will create its own environment and execute the code so it's a low code platform everything will be provided but yeah for now right if you are building any custom agent this will help you build your uh, help in uh, execute your code into the local environment as well as on the uh, your production environment so in the next session we'll see how we can exactly execute the code using docker uh, that way it will help you understand how you can deploy your code uh, into production and how it will work how the code execution will work on the docker environment i hope you like this particular video and it was a good learning for you so please go ahead and like the video subscribe to my channel and uh, i'll see you soon in the next video thank you so much